Hey, people. Welcome back to the Zig and Ollie show. This will be part two of this mini-series whereby we talk about whatever comes onto our minds. I think today, um, Zig said something about video games, so I sort of agreed, because if I disagreed, then he'd come and kill me, and I don't want that. <laughs> That's right, Oliver. I would kill you, and we are indeed going to talk about games. What games have you got in mind, Ollie? Um, well, I'm thinking about Altered Beast, Mortal Kombat, Half-Life 1, and maybe some Guild Wars. How about you? Well, I, I'm quite happy with them, but maybe a bit of the old Doom and Duke Nukem, seeing as they're my forte. Fair enough, I guess that also works. Well, Mortal Kombat. It's got a catchy theme tune, gratuitous violence. What more does a game need? Um, possibly a good design team, and a <laughs> gameplay factor. Yeah, uh, yes, I suppose, but then again, they did have pretty good sprites for the time. Apart from yeah, the fact that they were, they were just pretty much palette changes and that. And copies of each other, yeah. Yeah, but then again, you can't argue with the fatality. And then <laughs> some guy exploding because someone poked him in the eye. Oh, no, it's not like poked him in the eye. It's usually something horribly unrealistic, like he grabbed him by the waist and snapped his spine in half. Yeah, like, um takes his mask off, then all of a sudden the boar flies in on a Red Baron style plane, then steals his underpants, causing him to explode. That was a hidden oh. fatality for Morph, by the way. <laughs> May I Mortal Kombat? Good game. Duke Nukem, Duke Nukem. Hail to the king, baby. Hail to the king, indeed. What do you think about Duke Nukem? I think Duke Nukem is, like, an amazing game. It's a classic. It's got everything that a game needs. It's got blood and gore. It's got a um, hardcore character. It's got jumping for one thing, which really impressed me as a kid. It's got nudity, gibs, everything that a game needs. Do Nukem 3D. It w it was good, wasn't it? Yep. It, was, it was good, but the fact that every boss in the game could be killed by circle sidestepping was a bit of a mess, I think. Yeah. Although, saying that, most of the people in town didn't really know about circle strafing because they only just come to terms with there being more than one dimension to games. And the ability to jump. Yeah. And at the time, not many people actually played it with a mouse because that support was only done later on, if I recall. Alright, alright. So yeah, agreed, Duke Nukem, good game. Yep. Yeah. How, how do you think it compares to Doom, though? Doom, 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 Doom was, Doom was good, Doom was good. I mean, for one, it had possibly the most unrealistic weapons ever. It had, was it the big fucking gun? Yeah, yes, the big fucking gun. Yeah, that, yeah, it had that thing. But Doom knowledge isn't very good, but it's mediocre. It had the big fucking gun. I mean, what else could you want in the game, apart from the biggest fucking gun? Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> but you know, I mean it's it's not like um, guns and games are say, a phallic extension of someone's personality or anything. But you know, big guns are awesome, and you can shoot people yeah. and stuff. That's always fun. no. I am gonna stop you there because the big fucking gun has nothing over the half Life two gravity gun. Oh no, of course not. That that was just. Oh, what better way to finish someone off than picking them up in the air, shooting them off, exactly. than like. Physics gun, gravity gun, physics gun was fantastic. Pick them up and throw them long distances away. That always works. Yeah. Or picking up their grenade and chucking it back at them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, grenades on the floor, gravity gun, shoot it back at them, they die. Uh, well, one of my fondest memories of Half-Life 2 was when, at the beginning of the game, where he tells you to pick up a can and put it in the bin. I did the cheat and then got the gravity gun. I killed him, then put him in the bin. Uh, <laughs> right. It is hacking's bad, hacking's bad. You should not, you shouldn't cheat video games. First time through, complete it normally. Second time through, oh, fuck it, who cares, cheat. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's pretty much my philosophy on it. Apart from games like Resident Evil and that, which you're a right bitch to do. Well, of course, I've played through them hundreds of times without cheating. But then when you get the opportunity to just run through it with a great big Gatling gun or something, you always think, which is more fun? <laughs> yeah. When you start the game with a rocket launcher, way. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Resident Evil, you got to love that dodgy dialogue in the first one, where it's like, "What was that thing?" I don't know, Barry. There's a page missing from this book. 
Perhaps it was the most important part. I know shit, Sherlock. They removed it because it was the most, well, it was the least important page in the book and had absolutely no significance whatsoever. Yeah, okay, it must have been right off. It must have been really bad going to the toilet in that house. It's like, oh, shit, I'm gagging for a piss. Oh, no, where did I leave the uh, crescent moon key? Oh, shit. Now I'm going to have to move all these statues around so that I can get the emblem so that I can unlock the shitter. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I remember when Claire and Leon start, Claire gets a hairpin, because as you know, all girls carry a hairpin around with them so they can unlock doors and enter rooms which they are not allowed to normally get into. <laughs> and uh, the guy starts with a uh, lighter, despite the fact that he isn't a smoker, which which surprised me, seeing as how many non-smokers have Zippos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my thoughts. Like, you'd expect him to start with something useful, like, he's a policeman, what do policemen have? Well, policemen. What, what do they have? Radios? Guns? I know, I mean, you'd expect him to Let's say he's got a radio, let radio for help somewhere outside Raccoon City. <laughs> I know, it's just like, it's like Jewel, that, well, have you ever seen Jewel? Well, I'll summarise the plot to it. There's a guy in a car driving along a road and there's this truck behind him. Not once did the guy stop and think, you know what, this big truck's coming after me. I know, I'll turn around and piss off back home. Oh, he doesn't, does he? He keeps driving down that road, getting chased by someone in a truck that wouldn't be able to turn if he was on a fucking roundabout. No. <laughs> it's, just, it's just things like that. That annoy me. It's like, oh look, there are zombies everywhere. I know. We'll split up. <laughs> As you do, of course, when the zombies still then kill you individually. You know. Can't we? It's like you're in a room. There's this gun cabinet. There's this key to escape. There's a helicopter. What's the only thing that shines up in the room? A toothpick that you need to unlock the bathroom so that you can get the key to the broom cupboard, which has got the washing machine powder in which you need then to combine with some other to make a nuclear bomb to finish the game. <laughs> Alternatively, you just go in the helicopter, but no, we don't want to do that. Because where there's a gun cabinet and a helicopter, and uh, sorry, the key to the escape where the helicopter is, what do we do? There's three zombies walking towards you. Escape, gun cabinet, escape. Gun cabinet, of course! What? What kind of logic is that? Hello, it's like, um... Well, the opening bit to Resident Evil 3, there were these mercenaries in the lift. They open the door, there's no one in there, they go in. They open the door, and out of nowhere, from behind them, in the lift that they were in, out come this entire army of zombies. They were in a lift for a couple of seconds, and they didn't notice all these zombies that were running at them, in this lift, which is about a metre <laughs> by a metre. <laughs> it's it, it just boggles the mind that these are trained mercenaries that are well versed in the art of war they should know that when you go into a lift full of zombies the zombies might be a bit pissed off with you and you don't go in there <laughs> you'd think that wouldn't yeah it's like in um oh it's like in pretty much any other game you always think i wouldn't have done that that's just not sensible beginning of resident evil 2 playing as Leon, get the gun shot past the zombies, and the guy dies, you get his shotgun. I mean, it's a fucking gun shop. Why don't you take five shotguns, each with a hundred shells in or something, so you never ever run out? With the fucking gun shop, I'm sure you can make something. Oh, wait, right, the gun shop, you'd expect them to have a more than a few guns than just a shotgun and a packet of bullets because there's no signs of looting seeing as the guy's still in there not really pissed off with anyone because he's robbed and which won't really matter he's gonna die anyway exactly it's not like he's gonna miss it oh the seat's full of zombies I know I'll hold out in the place for no food or water yeah sounds like a great plan mate <laughs> and the way that when you were idling or well when you were talking that you always used to stand there looking like well one leg crooked w woggling one hand around just so you knew who was talking like don't don't shoot me I'm a human then you woggle your arms and the guy comes over and says oh 